Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about insulin glulacine, also known by the brand name Apidra. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Before we get into insulin glulacine in specific, let's do a quick overview of insulin in general and the four main types of insulin. Insulin is extremely important. It allows our bodies to use the sugar that we get from eating, like glucose, for energy. And of course, our bodies and our cells need energy in order to function. Insulin is a hormone that is naturally secreted into our blood by the pancreas. The way that insulin works is it basically tells your body's cells to open up and allow glucose to enter into them. And once the glucose enters into the cells, the cells can use that glucose for energy production. This is why insulin is a hormone that lowers blood glucose levels, because it essentially takes glucose out of the bloodstream and puts it into the cells. Again, insulin lowers blood glucose levels. In patients with diabetes, typically type 1 diabetes, there's likely a problem with the pancreas and it isn't producing enough insulin. This means blood glucose levels would be too high, and that's why we need to administer supplemental insulin. Now let's get into the different types of insulin. There are basically four main types of insulin as follows. Rapid acting, short acting, intermediate acting, and long acting. For example, insulin glulacine is a rapid acting insulin. Now let's see what sets these different insulins apart from one another using this chart. The intensity on the left is measured by how much the insulin lowers blood glucose levels, which as you can see in the red line is very intense. This happens with a rapid acting insulin. It acts very quickly and very strongly, but as you can see in the chart, the duration or how long it lasts is not very long. This is contrasted by a long-acting insulin, as shown in blue, which takes a while to start to have any real effect on blood glucose and never gets really intense at one point, but it can affect blood glucose over the course of 24 hours. Each of these different types of insulin have three main things that set them apart from one another, which are the following. Onset, which is how quickly the insulin lowers blood sugar. Peak, which is when the insulin is at its maximum strength and duration, which is how long the insulin continues to work to lower blood sugar. Using these three terms, onset, peak, and duration, let's go back and look at insulin glulacine. Remember, insulin glulacine is a rapid-acting insulin, so we'll be looking at the red-colored line. Keep in mind that this chart is not specifically made for insulin glulacine, but we can still use it as a guide. So insulin glulacine has an approximate onset of 5 to 10 minutes a peak of approximately one to two hours, and finally a duration of about three to five hours. So like we said, the most common use for insulin is patients with diabetes, often for type one diabetics, but sometimes for type two as well. Dosing varies very greatly between patients based on weight, diet, exercise, and more. Keep in mind that there are two main types of different insulin orders, which are the basal bolus orders and the sliding scale orders. I'll leave a link in the video description to my video on those. I really recommend reviewing that video to get a good understanding on how to follow these orders and administer insulin correctly and on time. Now, you'll typically see insulin glulacine being ordered as a bolus order before meals. For example, it is often given within five to 10 minutes before meals due to its very rapid onset. It can also be given as a sliding scale order depending on the blood glucose level. For type 1 diabetics, common doses can be between 0.5 to 1 unit per kilogram of body weight per day, and that total amount would be split up and given before meals. Just note that insulin glulacine is able to be mixed with an intermediate acting insulin called insulin NPH. And keep in mind that renal and hepatic impairment, more often in elderly patients, may affect insulin dosing, requiring lower doses. Hypoglycemia, or abnormally low blood glucose levels, is the most common side effect of insulin. Hypoglycemia may present as dizziness, weakness, confusion and irritability, hunger, headaches, and more. Other side effects of insulin include hypokalemia, or low potassium levels in the blood, weight gain, and more. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of insulin. Monitor blood glucose levels regularly according to the doctor's order. It is common to check blood glucose before every administration of insulin, unless ordered otherwise. Avoid administering insulin directly from the fridge, as it will still be cold, which can be more uncomfortable when injecting. To warm the insulin, gently roll it in your hands and avoid shaking. 
Remember to rotate the site of administration with each dose to maintain adequate absorption by the tissues. If insulin is administered in the same spot with every dose, lipohypertrophy, which is a buildup of fatty tissues under the skin, can occur, lowering absorption rates. Once opened, insulin vials and pens can only be stored for about two to four weeks, depending on the type of insulin and what guidelines your facility is using. Always monitor intake after the administration of insulin glulosine to ensure that the patient is eating adequately at mealtime. If the patient does not eat, they will likely need at least some form of carbohydrates to prevent hypoglycemia. That could be something like juice, candies, or glucose tablets. And that's about it for the basics of insulin glulosine. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.